Sorry guys, welcome back to Stinson Farms. This is Bill. Hey, we're here today with another video on the 7000 John Deere planter. Uh, I mentioned uh, earlier in a video that, uh, or last video actually, that uh, I had some hydraulic issues for my markers. Uh, we're going to tear into that and see what we find. Uh, I haven't done anything to it yet other than let the markers loose and you'll be able to see the whole process and see what we find and what we have to do to, to make the repair. So right here I've got uh, undone. This is the, the last to hose the marker up in place. You have to unlatch that for it to work. Uh, when I done that, this marker laid all the way down. If you see the the uh, the planters in the up position, uh, this marker shouldn't have, it shouldn't have came down. It should have stayed up. But of course, we got some issues inside, and we'll look at that. Let's walk around the other side for a minute. So if you can see here on the ground is hydraulic oil and all I did this morning was raise this thing up long enough to get it latched in place uh, to where to hold to get this pin right here in so it's holding itself up mechanically the hydraulics is not holding it up this marker is loose as well but of course it's it's not coming down so what we're going to do I'm going to I'm going to take these bolts out right here, which is going to hold the cable and uh, the, where the cable attaches here. That'll allow this marker to come down and that'll show us into the end. I'm also going to have to take this pin right here out and this will rotate out of the way and it'll give us a clear shot to what's inside. So we're going to do that real quick. So be right back. All right, so I'm going to put the lock back in place while I take this cable loose because I really don't want this thing falling on my head. So that's how you put that on and that'll just hold that marker up. Mechanically, it's not held up hydraulically or the cable takes all the pressure off the cable. So what we're gonna do, like I said, is take these bolts out right here and that'll release uh, the cable from the marker and we'll be able to lay this marker down and get it out of the way all right i got the bolts out i will be able to just remove this lock lay this marker down on the ground now. Alright, so it is down and out of the way. Can't see a lot yet. It's going to be right inside there. Like I said, we'll take this pin out here. It's, that pin's actually this pin's actually made to be a shear pin in case you hit your marker on anything. Uh, hang your marker. Uh, it's supposed to shear this pin to keep it from uh, bowing your marker up. So we ought to be able to get a hold of this marker now and just rotate it back out of the way. Alright, so what we're looking at in there and I'll get a flashlight here in a minute, but we have a cylinder right here. It's the end of it, it bolts in right here. Uh, we want to, uh, we've got say a hose connection right here and we're gonna try to figure out where this thing's leaking at. But let me get a flashlight and I'll be right back. So if that helps you see up in there any, we can see a couple hydraulic connections. We can see the cylinder uh, sitting right here and I can see oil in there but really can't tell any more about it so we're gonna we're gonna take these bolts out here and this whole assembly will slide out this end now we have to unhook the cable from the other marker on the other side we'll do that and we'll also tie us a rope on it 
because we'll have to pull that cable back through because it'll all come this way. We won't have any way to get to it. So we'll tie us a rope on it, pull it through, and uh, so we can pull the cable back through and get it in place when we're done. All right, I got the uh, cotter pin out of this pin here. We're going to slide this pin out. Uh, we'll tie our rope uh, into this piece to end the cable. And when we pull it through, we'll be able to we'll be able to retrieve it back on this end. Okay, so we got that. We got the cable unhooked and got the rope tied to it. We're going to start taking the other end apart. See what we can find. Okay, I took the two bolts out of here, two little stud bolts, bolted in right here. Uh, I've already pulled it out a little bit, and that's what I was talking about. Once you unbolt those, this assembly will pull out. I don't know how easy, because I've never had one out before. Alright, so I'm not having any luck getting it to slide any further. I'm going to have to investigate this a little bit. And I will be back with you in just a moment. Okay, I got her out. And what it was, it was this little piece right here was hanging. Uh, hanging on the uh, bracket where it bolts, bolts in up there. Uh, and I found oil leak. Uh, it's exactly what I was hoping it wouldn't be. Uh, I would have been tickled if it had been one of these flex lines, this flex line. Even if it had been the steel line inside, I could have, I, I had a fix for that. But uh, if you can see here, I did, it's coming out of that cylinder. That cylinder is blowed. The good thing is that cylinder is rebuildable. Uh, the bad thing is, I don't know how readily the parts are. So, well, that's where we're at. So we're gonna be getting this unhooked. We will get this cylinder assembly inside the shop and we'll tear into it. And hopefully it's something that we can do uh, fairly easy or get some parts fairly easy and get this thing rebuilt. Uh, but that's what it is. Well, here's the, here is the cylinder assembly. Uh, sorry I didn't get any video taking it apart, but I will video putting it back together. Uh, but I really didn't know what I was dealing with and how it came apart, so I had to kind of figure that out as I went. But this is all the parts of it. And uh, just so you know, there is no shortcuts. Uh, all of that comes apart to get this out. That's just the way it is. Uh, so, uh, so here's what I found. I got uh, this is the wiper seal, of course, and and it was still okay. I bent it up a little bit, getting it out. But this was all that was left of the seal that was in it, and it was just dry rotted and gone, completely gone. So, uh, took a little trip down to the hydraulics place and I don't know if you can see in there or not but the seal is already in there I uh, picked up a seal they stuck it in there for me so that's there uh, got a new wiper seal right there I'm fixing to put that in and then we're going to start putting this thing back together but that's it and it's not as much trouble as it looks like I mean it's a few little uh, moving parts but it, uh, it came apart fairly easy but I never had dealt with one, so I didn't know what I was dealing with until I got it apart. So, oh, here's something real cool. So this is something else I didn't know. And I don't know how well this is going to show up, but, and we'll look at this again as we, after we get the cylinder in it. But a single cylinder, single hydraulic line, but one marker to time and drop. The other one stays up. So that's all controlled by this mechanism right here. And... The blocks, this block, that block, on either end of the cylinder will catch 
this notch right here, when it moves, it's going to pull that notch. Watch here in the center how everything switches. And then if you see this bar behind it, see how it rotates up and down? When that switches, this bar here will come up. The block will be behind it, so I won't let this end of the cylinder move. So the next time, this end of the cylinder will move, and it'll slide over top. So, let's see if I can get an angle where you can see that. I'll pull this. You can see? That just, that just swaps. Now, this end's up, and the other end's down. And uh, it'll let one end of the cylinder move at a time. So that way... Uh, and each end of the cylinder has a cable hook to it. It's hooked to one of the markers. So that's how one marker will go down and the other one up. And then they rotate each time you raise it up and down. That's pretty cool. But uh, we're going to get this put back together. So uh, we're going to get started. So the first thing I got to do is put the wiper seal in. You want to put it in with the open side up. And it'll fit right in that groove. So I got me a little block of wood. I'll sit right here, take a hammer, lock it down in there. All right, so we've got it all the way in there, if you can see that. So now I'm gonna put this rod in. in. Uh, and if you look right here, there's a little ring right here and it's split. And it's down in this larger groove and compress and it'll allow it to go in. Once we get that in there, we'll have to go through this hole, the port where the uh, hydraulic line hooks up, and we'll have to get that ring jumped up into this slot right here. That way it'll, uh, it'll keep the rod from being able to come out of a catch. If you can hear that, it's got a good tight seal on it, and that's what we're wanting. And they're a little tough to get in there sometimes, but that should solve our leak, our leaking problem. All right, so we need to get this little ring back in, back in its groove. I don't know if you can see down in there at all. But uh, we're going to get it out of the big groove into the little groove. And we'll do that with a screwdriver. And you'll have to have it where you can spin, spin the rod to get it back in place. I think it done it. Yeah, see how it hits. I won't let it come out. I don't think it's really in any danger coming out anyway, but that's how that works. We'll get all this put back in. These blocks that go through here through this slot. I got a hole in them and there's a cotter pin that goes down. That'll go down and hold them in place. There's the other one. So that is, that's in place. We'll flip it over where we can get to these pins from the bottom side. And we'll try to get them bent over a little bit so they can't 
fall out. Okay, you got both card pins secured. Uh, I'm gonna see how this thing works. When this goes this way, and the catch that one plate, it trips it, and that allows this bar to rotate. Now that allow this end to come forward, and then when it goes back, it'll catch and trip it in another direction. And now this one can't move and this one can come forward. So that's that's pretty slick. Alright, so they're all this piece is back together. We got a ring back in so we can put our uh, hydraulic fitting back on, make sure the O ring stays in place. one which connects to the side of the uh, of the planter that where we took it apart it will go right here This hooks to the cable that goes on the far end. The part that hooks in this is still out on the planter. But what we got to do is got to come through this hole. It rests right there. And then we have a jam nut. We'll run it back up to about where it was. And then we got the piece here that hooks to this bracket. Make sure that this slot where the hook to here and this eyelet is turned uh, turn together uh, for pin going here and a pin going here. So that's where that the piece going on to the uh, the other cable is going to hook up. up and get it lined up. Stick our pin back in this end. Put the carter pin in. go back in the planter. I'm not going to lie, it was a little intimidating when I looked at it uh, because I never had done it before. But it's not all that bad. And thanks to my buddy at the hydraulic shop. I uh, worked with these guys for years. They deal with them a lot at work and uh, on the farm too. But they, they've either got it or they can get it. But Hydraulic wise, uh, they usually got about anything you need on these kind of kind of repairs. So it took about an hour to run up there and get that seal. I think it's $14 uh, for the seal and the uh, wiper. And uh, I think that's pretty cheap, pretty cheap repair. But uh, we'll get this stuck back in, just reverse how we took it out. I'll, I'll film a little bit of that and hopefully uh, not only does that cure our hydraulic leak, that also uh, will allow our markers to work uh, like they should. 
and then we'll be we'll be ready to plant some corn if it uh, if it quits raining or when it quits raining it will quit raining we will get some corn planted uh, it's just a matter of when it's going to and uh, we still got time but uh, we can only do what we can do so we'll get this stuck back in the planter and, and uh, see how she works okay we're on day two of this repair job um, couldn't get it all done uh, the first try so all we like here now is just replacing the uh, uh, cylinder assembly uh, for our, our markers uh, just a repeat of pulling it out we'll be sliding it back up in the tube here we got a we've got to attach the hydraulic hose and the cable to it and then slide it back up in there and get it bolted in place hopefully uh, in doing that we'll uh, we have cured the problem and we'll be good to go so we're going to get with that right now okay i got the cable attached i got the hydraulic line attached and i have ran the hydraulics um, the test for leaks and everything is really good clean no leaks so we're going to put this thing in and hopefully it's going to work like we need it to i've got remember i got this cable when we talked about when we pulled pulled this unit out it pulled the cable through from the far side that attaches to the far um, marker and we've got a rope tied on that end so we can pull it back that way and we'll have to pull our slack up as we go uh, once we get it started in there okay so i had to go pull the slack up take the slack out of that cable i thought i could get, the, get it in far enough it would hold before i had to do that but that wasn't the case All right, now that we've got it this far, I'm gonna try to pull from the other end and pull the cable and see if I can't, see if I can't pull it through that way. All right, so that's in and bolted back in place. This thing looks good. Hopefully, hopefully we're in good shape. We'll get this marker swung around and we'll get it all connected. Okay, this end's connected. Everything's back in place. Got to tighten these two bolts up right here. All right, that's one end. Let's get the other end buttoned up. Okay, we got the other side buttoned up. And uh, we're going to crank the tractor up and work these things and see if we've been successful.
you gonna get that? That really makes me happy. That is exactly how it's supposed to work. As well as no leaks. Well, that's what we were shooting for, and I think we accomplished it. Uh, sometimes you go into a repair, you really don't know what you're going to get into. You just know something's broke. It won't work. Uh, and I've never been inside one of these things before. But, you know, it's just, it's just hydraulics. It's just mechanical parts. And sometimes you just got to tear into something and, and see what it looks like. And uh, most of the time you can fix it. So I get pretty lucky from time to time, but uh, $14 repair, I'm tickled to death with that, and it looks like it's going to do what we need to do. So all I like on this unit now is getting some grease in it, uh, getting her lubed up. I've got to get my uh, speed set on it uh, so I can get my row count, pop, row population uh, like I want it, and uh, see what else. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to adjust the markers uh, or at least test them and adjust them if I need to. I know they're going to need to be adjusted because of moving in the uh, row units to narrow to 30 inch rows. But we'll get those adjusted in and we're going to plant some corn when it dries up, that is. But uh, hey, I know everybody out there is in the same situation as I am. Uh, it's raining, it's wet. A lot of people's got some corn in the ground, got beans in the ground. Some of it's doing really good. Some of it uh, not so well because of the, the water and the cool temperatures. But uh, we're not too late yet. We've still got plenty of growing season to go. And I'm going to get mine planted uh, hopefully as soon as it dries up. And I know everybody else will be busy too. Well, hey guys, that's it for this video and this repair. And I, I'm really happy you're here watching this video uh glad to be able to share it with you and uh hey if you like our videos uh, remember to hit the like button subscribe if you would and as always uh, we appreciate your support we appreciate any support that we get it's very humbling uh to know that the those out there that are interested in in what you're doing so uh we're just having fun with this uh i wanted to do this for my grandsons and uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it more than I really thought I would. But guys, if you would, and, and if you can support our channel, uh, just support, share, subscribe, whatever, whatever you, whatever you can do for us. But hey, I'm glad you're there. Thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.